Hi, this is DarkFox127 and welcome to another Skyrim Creation Kit tutorial video. Uh, today we're going to be working on our NPCs, uh, getting their packages sorted, getting them to um, go about a little more, I don't know, human-like, uh, so they're not just drones standing in the corner. Uh, maybe that's a bit too much Star Trek. Um, so, we're going to start off with our good friend Barney Blue back in our inn. Uh, if you've watched the tutorials, you should now know who Barney Blue is. But, um... As you can see, we did have him set up as a guard. Uh, I did cover package tutorials briefly in a um, a guards patrol sort of tutorial. First thing you want to do is load your Skyman update ESM file. Um, also then set as active the mod that you're editing. Uh, if you haven't got a mod, then you just load them to there. Now, uh, you'll notice that the Dawn Guard ESM is there. I'm just going to include this in the video quickly. Um, at the moment, nobody seems to be able to mod Dawn Guard. I think it's, it needs a, a patch for the creation kit, so don't get trying to load Dawn Guard. It just crashes the kit, so um, don't bother with that. But I've gone, again, um, I've gone ahead and done that anyway. I'm also going to note one little thing that people have been reporting. Um, basically, you start up uh, creating your mod, and then when you go to save, Everything crashes, kit won't have it, um, loads up the save sort of uh, window, but it just crashes the whole kit. Uh, if that happens, you can uh, do one or two things. Uh, one is save before you've even done anything, after you've just loaded up to start a new mod. Or you can basically just reinstall the kit and it usually fixes it for a short time. So I'm going to stop rambling now. Um, we're going to go ahead and begin by just taking a look at our, our package window in Barney Blue. Let's just go and edit our base. You can either edit by going into your, your list in here of actors. You're going to have to obviously have your actor built for this. I've got a separate tutorial for that. Um, or you can double click the actor, edit edit the base. So as you can see, I'm under the tab here, AI packages, and we've got nothing in there. Uh, if you've got anything in there and you are starting sort from scratch, we've duplicated another character, then you want to make sure that that is empty. So once that's empty, you can right click and add. Uh, you can add if you already have like, um, well, they've got a number of default packages on here which you can use. Uh, so uh, sleep near editor's location. Uh, these are all useful if you don't want to go messing around with things. Uh, if you want a quick, simple way, so you just pick a, a sleep package, sandbox. But once you've gone and picked all your packages or created your packages, uh, you want to make sure that you've got them in the right order. Now basically whatever package is at the top is the one that the game will look at first. So um, if the package at the top says that in any time the character wanders about, they're never going to go to the next package because as long as the top package is relevant, then they'll just keep doing that. So what you usually do is all of the um, the things that they do in their day, which you'll see in a moment, uh, you'll have them lined out. And anything that is for sort of the last resort package, the thing that they go and do when all the other packages aren't relevant, that needs to be at the bottom. So just keep that in mind. That should make more sense as I go along. So we'll get into actually creating one. First thing we're going to go and do, we're going to do a, a brand new package. Now what I usually do with my standard general NPCs when they live in a home or wherever they are, I usually do a sleep package. Uh, I used to do eat packages, but I'll show you why we don't. I don't personally bother with that. Um, obviously, do what I like to call a wonder package, which is basically sandbox. Uh, what they do after there's nothing, there's nothing else major to do. What they just go back to to doing. So um, other package, uh, sleep wonder. Uh, usually, if they're a merchant, it's a work package. So uh, the rest of the packages will be like um, what they need to be doing during the day, their general day-to-day -day activities. So we're going to go ahead and do. Let's just uh, let's just call this um, a Barney work, and uh, caps lock. I hate them. Um, Barney blue work. And what we're going to do, he's not actually got, um, he's not really working here, he's not set up to be a merchant, but we're just going to pretend that this is his work package. So this is his sort of day-to-day -day thing. Uh, now what you usually do with this is this will need to go sandbox, or if he was a guard, you'd pick patrol. So I'm just going to list in, the, in here, these are package templates. These are all the... Um, the standard actions that the character will be doing within this package. So you look down, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. You've got like eat, so they'll they'll find somewhere to eat, escort, and then you you choose what play they're escorting for what time, when, or under what conditions. I'll go through conditions in a moment. Um, 
flee to, flee from, follow. You can also get like um, ha uh, packages set up so that they can go and hunt things. Uh, you got hold position. Obviously, like I said, patrols, uh, guarding areas, or just general sandbox. Um, a lot of the time, what I do if I've set up a merchant in a house, sorry, a shop, uh, I'll just leave him in that shop and I'll lay out what I call, well, what are called idle markers, and I'll show you those in a minute. And basically, you you can lay things out for them to go and do on their own, so you don't have to point them to every individual thing that they have to do all day. So we're just going to go ahead, click sandbox. This is the general one that just says use anything within the specified radius of uh, either where they are or where he's specified. So near editor location is obviously where you've put them. Uh, we can say in cell and we can select our test in. This is usually a, a nice easy way of doing it. Uh, but if you have to specify somewhere on an exterior cell in a specific area, you could put down an X marker heading and point it to that X marker heading. So the way you do that, you'd select near reference. And if that barrel or there, if that was our X marker heading, you'd double click that. And within that, the radius of that selected reference, that item, that is where they'd uh, wander around. But for now, we're just going to say test in in cell. You can play around with all that yourself, you'll figure out how it works, you'll see um, what effects it has. As you can see in the actual package data it's obviously changed, we've had a lot more after we selected Sandbox, depending on what you pick you'll have different options up. And this is just basically um, ticking true or false, uh, whether they can do the um, the actual specified thing listed. So. It's like unlock on arrival. This is uh, very good for door locking. Uh, you'd have to have a, a lock list set for the, the area for that to work correctly. I'm not going to go into that. Um, allow eating, sleeping, pretty obvious conversation. And idle markers is an important one. If you want them to use idle markers, which are basically actions for them to perform uh, during their package, you'd want that ticked as true. So that's pretty important. Uh, if you want them to have aching legs after 10 hours, or however long the package is, uh, you can tell them that they can't sit down, which is pretty harsh. But you've got a load of stuff. Special furniture, I think, refers to like uh, alchemy benches and everything. Um, allow wondering. Well, there's all sorts of options. You can play with them, see what they do. But I'm um, not going to go too much into that. Now, uh, idle markers I've kept mentioning, like I said, they're the actions that are placed around, or you can do them in the actual package itself use specific and you'll just see now what an idle marker really is as you can see it's just a list of actions that they can perform so you get down some of them won't make sense but you got stuff like drink uh, point close eat soup oh that's fantastic I've got to use that one um, but loads of uh, interesting idle markers it's usually the uh, the bog standard ones like uh, read a book check out a chest uh, go sit down eat some food uh, sleep and basically you can set these in the package and as long as this package is active they'll just use these idle markers and you can say do them all randomly so pick one at random or run them in sequence uh, so you'll read a book have a nap have something to eat read a book have a nap have something to eat or you can just randomize it idle timer settings are basically how long they'll spend on each action so uh, if they're reading a book you can say 10 seconds for reading the book 10 seconds for going to sleep 10 seconds for eating whatever you want uh, there's other things on here like um, begin and change I haven't messed with that myself personally but it's uh, it's very much deep um, delving into to scripts uh, the proprietary script which I don't have that much knowledge of at the moment um, here's the interesting thing schedule uh, this is um, obviously going to say when the package is relevant so the package is only active during the times that you specify so You'll have the um, you only pick the start time and then how long um, it lasts. So you might have to do a little bit of simple maths. So if you wanted this to start at eight in the morning and we want him to work for twelve hours until eight in the evening, it's a bit of a harsh shift, but there you go. You can also pick so um, day of the week. Uh, what I've done with my, one of my followers is I've actually set it up so uh, on a Sunday only he goes fishing and then the rest of the time he's working so you can set all that up you've just got to make sure that you don't um, clash times or that you put them in the correct order so I'm going to leave that as any so 
Now, like I said, if you didn't set an hour or a duration and everything was just any, then he would always do that package. So you'd want that as at the bottom if it was like a, what I call my wonder package, which is what they revert to when they've got nothing else going on. Because you want them to go and do something. Uh, if you didn't do that, if you had packages between certain times and then there's gaps in the day where they're not doing anything, they'd just stand there. Uh, also, you'd need a, a package to tell them where to go back to if they were a follower and they didn't have any packages. Uh, when you tell them to leave you, they'd stand exactly where you've left them. And that's pretty important and people would be like, they're not going home. Um, that's a whole different kettle of fish. Uh, conditions. Um, if you're not really uh, familiar with conditions, they're exactly as it states. Uh, they're basically, you set conditions that say uh, this has to be happening or this has to be active or whatever. So... You say uh, get ID, uh, you could say get ID is basically to specify that it is a certain actor, which wouldn't make sense within an actor's packages, but uh, just an example, so you'd say if the character isn't Barney Blue, then the package wouldn't work. As an example, uh, you can also say get weather, if the weather is raining, then the package works, if it isn't, it won't. So conditions, I don't tend to mess around with much in packages, but you can play with conditions and see how it affects things. Uh, you can visit the wiki site to find out more on conditions. It'll probably explain it a little better. Uh, another really interesting thing here on packages is flags. As you can see, again, it's it's pretty much ticking them true or false, uh, whether they're relevant. Uh, a lot of things here. Uh, these are all obviously always just for the, the package you're on. So you can say that um, when the package starts, unlock all the doors that they're linked with. Um, on package change, uh, doors states for locks. Uh, hellos to player, random conversations. So you can sort of stop them from actually interacting with the environment with things like that. So uh, if people are having, having a fight, you can untick that so that they just ignore it. Or you can have it ticked so they go up and see what's going on. Uh, it's pretty common sense really, you just read them and... Um, see what what they what you can have them do and not do during their package so that's an interesting one there is weapon unequipped or weapons drawn so they've always got the weapon drawn that would be good if you're making a hunting package uh, for where they're going out hunting so you've really got to play around with it suit you got but we'll set this one to sandbox i've sat on the one package for a very long time but i think what people like about my tutorials i hope is the the length and detail i can sometimes go into but i am yabbering on a bit uh, when i showed you the schedule and we said eight for 12 hours uh, what Bethesda tend to do is they say, they list it in their ID to help them out a bit, is they'll say it starts at 8, put an X, and then put how many hours it goes on for. And that really helps yourself when you're checking out your packages and putting them in order. Uh, you've got your own little reference there without having to go in. That tells you um, roughly where you want to put that in the list. So go ahead and do that. So that at the moment says that he will wander around for 12 hours from 8 to 8, 8 in the morning to 8 in the evening he'll use anything that he can find within here actually um, we'll just yeah uh, we didn't need to set a radius that's what I was going to check so you'd want that at the top uh, but then when that isn't applicable that package when it isn't between those times he's just going to stand there at the moment and this is sort of where our package order comes into play so um, we need to make another package which is for something you can do since then. Uh, we'll put a sleep package in next. I'll just do a sleep package and a wonder package. So we will go. Uh, sleep and we'll say 12 for 8 hours. Let's see how I'm, I'm doing that again to help myself. We'll say 8 hours, click 12, package. Then for a sleep package you just look for sleep and everything sort of uh, starts to really just go together now once you get the basics and we'll say incel now we're fine saying incel because he's the only guy in here and he can just go and find any bed available uh, if he's within a house where or a location more uh, if he's in a location where there's other people and you don't want him using their beds now you can actually set the ownership to the bed and you can also again select near reference click on that select the bed and then, well, we'll do that, in fact. We'll drag over. I'll give him a nice big bed. Let him live in some luxury. So you click on the bed. Okay. Uh, but that isn't actually specifying the bed itself at the moment. 
that is more or less saying uh, anything around that bed so I usually just stick a, a radius of 10 so that's pretty much the only bed within sight that's how I do it so go ahead and click OK um, that basically says that it'll sleep for 8 hours from 12 o'clock in, uh, in the evening when it hits 12 and uh, like I said now he's going to use both them packages but there's still a few hours where he's not going to be uh, actually doing anything and he's just going to stand there so the one package I always put in um, I'll just come out of that uh, you can add this one if you like uh, you can go default sandbox and there is a good default sandbox which is usually like um, there it is, uh, 1024 you can add that one, make sure it's at the bottom otherwise he'll always be doing that and he won't do his sleep and work uh, put that at the bottom and he'll refer to that which should get him going to his default editor location and wandering around there as long as he's not doing anything else or you can create your own like I like to do call it Barney Blue Wonder Package don't specify a time so you leave your schedule any because this is what he's going to go and do whenever nothing else is happening so it can be at any time put in sandbox and we want to give it a good radius or again we can make things easy for ourselves point at the uh, the in itself hopefully that all makes sense there uh, I'm just going to dig a little more into idle packages like we said we can set idle pa um, sorry markers idle markers uh, we can set them in the package or we can do it this way um, you probably want markers actually within the the cell itself for people on a, a sandbox package uh, so that they can go and just use markers around now, as you can see these are idle markers here stuff like lean up against a wall um, you've also got them on benches obviously it's like um, well they're not idle markers but they're, they're sort of um, they're markers which specify an action sorry I'll show the idle markers themselves but you've got actions here and stuff they'll use all this as long as they're they're sandboxing around the area they'll see it and they'll go and use it if nobody else is on it you've also got it on the workbench there so we're going to actually set idle markers for specific actions so just type in idle marker make sure you're on all in the, the window there and as you can see you've got a list it's not as many as you would have in the packages but you have got um, a selected list here some are sort of specific to specific kind of uh, characters uh, NPCs so you've got one that's specified to a saber cut to lie down um, as you can see book reading put that there and you don't have to put a book in their inventory they'll just pull one out of thin air don't worry about that and you can usually set this ownership so you can say that only Barney Blue can use it and it'll actually uh, appeal more to Barney Blue so it'll be more likely to go and use a marker that has his name on it or you can you can leave it open for anybody to use so idle markers are really that simple again uh, we had a, a similar sort of thing like patrol data within the the packages themselves which specifies how long they're going to spend on each uh, you'd have to set that to idle markers out there uh, as well uh, you wouldn't have to but if you wanted it to be a bit more realistic you can uh, you can select idle time 8 so say they'll only use that for 8 seconds and then they'll move on to another one and you can place as many as you like but um, obviously the one thing that you want to make sure of uh, which is obviously um, required is make sure that you've fully nav meshed the area or that it already is nav meshed uh, otherwise the NPC won't appear they won't see idle markers and they won't use them so I think that pretty much um, tells us everything on AI packages and getting your NPCs to wander around and do things uh, with the packages like I said you don't have to have it so general as in uh, just wander around here you can set things specific and always select a reference and you can point at idle markers items locations uh, just really play around with it uh, it's really that simple once you've got the basics to it everything else seems to just fall into place it's really quite easy and you'll be well away and you'll be setting up like um, standard packages for NPCs with under five minutes so take your time have a good look at it and um, see how things go uh, I hope that's pretty much summed everything up I don't think I've missed anything uh, so thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time